Does this imply, it literally does, think it through, that Andrew Tate doesn't belong now because he is just a guy in a video? But if he comes back with a billion dollars and buys Blast, is he suddenly... Now there's going to be an Andrew That's Tate championship question. in Luton in the UK. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of The Four Horsemen. It's been a while. We also have a surprise guest today, which is uh, Lauren Flanagan here from One Team Partners, formerly of CAA, a famous agency. She's represented uh, many leagues, entities, and esports. She is currently on the board of the LCS Players Association and uh, working on the players' rights negotiations. Did I get everything, Lauren, in there? Those are the highlights for sure. <laughs> also, so, second ever horsewoman. <laughs> second ever horsewoman. Uh, Laura, Laura and I used to work on a consultancy together with uh, with Bryce Blum. We're really happy to have her here today. Uh, this show, by the way, guys, is brought to you by esportsbet.io. Head on over there, predict through the major and uh, the League of Legends World Championship. So, good times over there. Um, we are going to get right into this. Obviously, this show had to happen because of the massive drama about. As usual, we have to describe this first, this event first. So what happened, and feel free to jump in, everybody, and correct the record. Um, Carlos posted a tweet where he included a video of him drinking, it appears, with a, a persona non grata on the internet named Andrew Tate, and then later doubled down on having the ability to party with whomever he wanted to. Since Carlos is G2's brand effectively in many ways, this is very difficult for fans to reconcile who may not like Andrew Tate. Now, I didn't know who Andrew Tate was uh, before this started because Watch I just... Watch on TikTok if you don't know. <laughs> not on TikTok. I don't know what the fuck is going on. So, like, I didn't understand, like, the concept of this until... Uh, the drama came out, but I know Richard, you can give us the the quick Andrew Tate breakdown for boomers like me who may not know who this guy is. Yeah, sure. So I'll tell you about Andrew Tate, and then once we've set the table, I'll tell you about a much broader, rich tapestry. But let's just talk about Mr. Tate for a while. Uh, basically, he was like a a, a very mediocre, uh, you know, kick uh, kickboxer um, who parlayed. Uh, his uh, way in, on to being in Big Brother in, like, I don't know, 2016 Big Brother, the reality TV show created by Endemol, where people go into a house, they're locked out from the outside world, and uh, they play up to the cameras, and they're voted out one at a time. And I, I can't remember, he didn't even get too far in it, I think, because uh, he had sex on the show, and it was particularly you know, aggressive sex, but it was consensual, but the people didn't like the optics of it. So I think he, he might have even got voted out uh, over that. Anyway, fast forward a couple of fucking years, and he's on that fucking Manosphere grift where it's like, you know what I mean? Like, he's just another fucking mediocre guy with a gym card uh, who, you know, because the Manosphere is all about 80 IQ roid heads having their daddy's first dabble with philosophy, he does a few fucking TikTok videos, uploads a few fucking things talking about, you know, hey, if you want to be a man, embrace traditional fucking masculinity. His version of traditional masculinity happens to be fucking just rampant misogyny where women are property uh he says a bunch of fucking you know wacky shit which is always is balanced out with the fucking you know hey go to the gym it's good for you and you go oh that's reasonable and also women should have no rights and you go ah uh, what the fuck who's this guy okay, so no, he was doing you. Yeah, and he was doing that, and he also ended up in Romania at one point where he was running a bordello slash brothel with some associates of his. He got investigated for human trafficking there because apparently one of the, uh, how shall we say, uh, you know, service providers that worked there might not have been too happy with their stay. That was investigated by Romanian police. There was no charges brought about it. And then naturally, because the internet's fucking terrible, he blew up on the internet, and now I have to know who this cunt is. So <laughs> Oh, that's pretty much this is why I don't happy. pay attention to these people, Richard, because yeah. it's like, you know, I, I can't I don't have enough time in my life to uh, pay attention to whoever is doing crazy shit on the Internet from from week to week or is unnaturally blowing up. Yeah, um, along, yeah. I want to add on this. Along, the, along, along the line, he was accused. I mean, like, you know, there was a number of like, I think there was some sexual assault allegations in the UK where he said, um, you know, and, and that was what supposedly one of the reasons why he moved abroad, because he said he didn't think he would be extra, extradited or investigated. I don't know what the status of those charges 
are or is. Uh, all you really need to know about him is he pulled the old Alex Jones defense, which, by the way, if you ever say this to avoid being held accountable for your actions, you are just garbage, you, you know, right? And that is that in a statement when NBC News did an investigation into the human trafficking charges, he literally said, I am a thought leader and spiritual guru, something along those lines, and I only play a character on the internet. So if you're ever invoking the I only play a character defense, you know what I mean? You don't even have the courage of your own convictions. You're trash. One thing I want to say about this topic is the reason why I actually think it is a complete minefield for for a lot of people who are interacting with these tweets or commenting on it, taking part in the culture war over like, what did this guy do? Did he not do that? Did he say this? Did he not say that? One of the reasons it's so fraught is because there are loads of material out there. This is someone who was on the internet for years and years and years and was being built up as a fringe figure on the outskirts with a YouTube and with Instagram and these things and had his own little sort of subgroups that people could join where they could you could like learn investing tips. I think it's basically that like you copy the trades they're doing and stuff and they'd show you how, how like you get like a Forex account and how you make fucking crypto exchange things. So things that people are interested in that would draw people in. And here's the key thing to understand. When they were coming up through the outskirts like that, this was a brand selling point. The fact that the person was really edgy and was saying the things that no one's allowed to say and the things that young men are like, oh my goodness, is that the real take on it? Is that outside of the woke culture? They, that was how they were branding themselves. And the issue is when more recently, they had like a whole media army of people who were incentivized to make loads of TikToks and take all the clips and sound bites and put them out there. When this person's blown up and they got onto these huge podcasts like the Nelk Boys and all these big people that are enormous, like the biggest podcast in the world, basically. Like the joke is, like he probably would have been on Joe Rogan next day, I imagine, if he hadn't have been banned off the internet. He was, was on that trajectory. When they go yeah. into that world there, what you're going to find is this. If you're a young guy who's just seen half a dozen TikTok clips at 30 seconds and you've heard a good sound bite or a funny comment comment or just some response that you think is just like, hey, it's just pushing back against what culture. You will make the mistake potentially of thinking, wow, since people are attacking him, is this like scenarios I've heard of where they railroad someone and the person said and done nothing, but people are just lying. And what they're doing, in fact, is because he's saying the real truth about like men and women, they're people just making up lies. They're just making up things because they can't attack what he's really said. Like, why don't you address what he really said here about like, you know, he actually treats women well. The point here is this, if you're a young guy and especially a young guy in the East industry you don't know who you're vouching for you have no idea who this person is but you're vouching for them over the internet like i would vouch for monty someone i have known for years a close friend of mine. i know who he is as a man i know his family life i know his background if he says something i could even come out without even talking to him and go like i'll stand by him anyway because he's a personal friend of mine and i'd be willing to take the licks and the shots if someone attacked monty but in this particular case that person isn't your friend you don't know them now look you can say whatever you want it's your account but all i'd say is this look at the nature of how this has played out in the public reaction and even from people who themselves maybe know very little bit about the people involved here. And what you'll see is this, you are not playing at low stakes. You don't know it, you are playing at the highest stakes. The tweet you make now, the defence you make now, of someone you might not even know all the information about, that can potentially haunt you forever. That is the like of the tweet that in four years when you want to get into esports, when you find that you're good at the next esports game, that is the one that will be screenshotted, will be brought back up, will be referenced. And even worse, when you vouch for people you don't know, even though this is unfair, they then later might make statements and take actions that also might poorly reflect on you and put you in a bad situation. And I'm sorry, nobody's going to care that the timestamp says 2022 and maybe the person did that in 2024. So yep. even though I did say this applies to everyone, if you're the young men out there who just think this is like 10 years ago, internet culture, like, ha, I'm just being edgy with a meme. It's like, well, listen, memes themselves could get you in trouble now. So all I'd say is watch your back and be very careful. Whoever you vouch for is someone you you would go to war for you would take the hits for yeah and and also like especially in this case too you may have seen the the more reasonable takes it sounds like from this guy but there's a lot of darkness out there as well that you when he went on the aware. big podcast monty he did a it, here's the thing he wasn't making a lot of those statements on those podcasts that was the fringe stuff yeah. years earlier at all on the big podcast he was saying all the things that in theory should counteract this if you already heard that like now we would say of course you'd treasure a woman and what i really meant was you know like how yeah. you'd like set up the that's the point there's information that'll make these people think no he's been misquoted he said loads of these things the point is he's been all over the spectrum of things you could say. So you're going to think you saw this part, but what happened over this part is the point. Yeah. yeah. What, what did you want to say, Lauren? In contrivance it is, by the way. What do you say, yeah, what so say, Lauren? I tend to be a pretty strong believer in the idea that, like, when someone tells you who they are, you should believe them. 
And I think Andrew Tate has been pretty clearly on the record over the years. He's there's there's not a lot of like there's not a lot to speculate about around his beliefs. I think he's he's quite straightforward about them. I mean, he is on the record in multiple different sources in multiple different ways in multiple different time periods. Um, you know, the the dude has been relatively consistent with his beliefs. And so, you know, I think like it's it's there and and pretty plain. And also, I mean, you- if someone only thinks I've seen this guy on TikTok, he was funny. The guy was a former kickboxer who then ran a bunch of online webcam girl businesses. Like, mm-hmm. like already that should maybe make you think. Maybe I should actually investigate that and find out more about this person before I defend <laughs> them over a TikTok video. You see what I mean? Like, yeah. it ain't small stakes you play for, guys. Yeah, he's yeah. like a you know that. SNL skit, this club has everything. Like, this guy has everything. Like, this guy, it's like, he's not, you know, human trafficking, violence against women. He has a hustle MLM that he's peddling that, you know, he's asking people to put out referral links and he's getting paid off of them. I mean, he is just a ladder of a lot of no. <laughs> okay. He's, so, he's, a cl- he's a classic grifter. He's, yeah. he's, he's the classic manosphere grifter. This is what blows my mind about it is that I, I don't know how many times I've seen this fella. I've seen him. It's just a different name every time. You know, it's like back way, way back. You had Dick Masterson when he went on Dr. Phil and he was like saying, all women want to date me. All of your women are pigs. You know what I mean? Saying women need to get on the treadmill. He won't date fat women. You had that. I can't even remember who came next. There was that uh, Roosh guy. Remember Roosh? Igor, yeah. Yeah, remember him? And th- this is in like the 2014 era uh, when all the pickup artists, that's what they used to call themselves, mm-hmm. pickup artists. And they were like, you know, sort of pandering to all of that. And that guy was ridiculous as well. Same same shtick. Women are property, you know, uh, rapist that's women's part of their marketing. Yeah, yeah, all of this, all of this gibberish. You know, yes. Mike Cernovich used to do that. Guerrilla Mindset when he wrote that book before he moved on to being a politico. Um, you know, there's like the uh, Richard Cooper's another one. The manosphere basically is just the same fucking grift. You, your, your audience is teenage boys who have fucking, you know, like they haven't got fully formed minds. And you spit out your pathetic surface level bro science philosophy about, hey, you should go to the gym and then women will like you. And if you eat meat and testosterone is the most powerful substance. No, all this fucking. Yeah, yeah, we get it. Like we get it. Like you could you, you could do an afternoon seminar and get this fucking shit. There's way more to life. Yet they tell all these fucking kids. It's like, you know, it's this you've got to live your life like this. And women are the enemy and you can't quite trust them. And actually society puts men down and blah. You know, you you say this to a bunch of fucking angry young men who are disenfranchised or whatever the fuck. They're going to eat it up, and that's the grift, and that's the hustle. And none of these dickheads believe what they're saying. They're just, you know, they themselves, like when you look at their history, they're always the fat little bully at school. They're always the guy who used to get beat up. That's why they started martial arts. They're always the guy that couldn't get laid and felt insecure about it. That's why they became a pickup artist. They always had some fucked up skin condition where they used to get bullied and called flaky, flaky Joe or something. They always got this tragedy in their lives where they turned it around and then they rewrite their own history and pretend they were always the alpha. It's like good for you for overcoming your difficulties, but you don't have to spew bile and fucking poison out there just to sort of overcompensate for the fact you know you own history like i said these guys are all fucking frauds and fugazis i feel sorry for anyone that buys into these uh you know fucked up philosophies like they're, they're, they're mean, losers they're losers i, in I think yeah. i i I, re- I don't want to get too into the weeds on this particular topic because i actually find this topic extremely interesting but just as an aside you know i i feel very strongly that a lot of young men don't receive the role models or structure that they need in order to succeed and so in a society that doesn't value creating that for them, then we get these grifters instead mm. who are or who are the who become the role models and become very kind of poisonous and, and misleading ones. And I think that's very sad. 
Uh, and it's not like there aren't real things mixed in. Like, there, obviously, there are grievances men can have. There are standards in society that have changed, and maybe sometimes they go too far the other way. But the point is that essentially, as Richard says, that just becomes like the back, but that's the meat of the grift, isn't it? Then you layer over it. Because here's the problem, right? I'll tell you how you actually know a lot of these people aren't what they portray themselves as, right? As much as I might not like certain political affiliations, if you ever go to one of their rallies, certain ones I'm not interested in, they will absolutely be on the grounds about getting you involved in real activism. Like They'll be like, come with us to this next rally or sign up to vote for this thing or we're going to this next election here. Or, right? If you go to the ones that are the grift, here's how you know. It's just like, buy my T-shirt. Like You've got to support me directly with this product and then yeah. I'll fight them for you. It's like, that's the person, as, as you're saying, like if that's someone who's lacking a strong male role model or some sort of like, like father figure, they're going to gravitate to someone like that. And that's why I say earlier, they're going to stupidly vouch for the person as if it was their dad, because they're going to think, but I did go to the gym, but I did clean my act. Up. I, oh, I can talk to women. And they're going to actually transfer all that to the guru, as it were. It's the same concept as the guru, like yeah. whatever, whatever you call it. I can't remember. I can't remember the Indian name for the other one. That's the same grift from the sixties, basically. Yeah. That's the way it works. So yeah, there's a lot of that going on. And I will say in my life, when I had male role models, when I was in my late teens and early 20s, who had a very big effect on my life and provided that structure for me, they did it for free. It wasn't. There was no ever expectation of payment. So that's a it's a good it's a good barometer for sure. Um, so I, I don't again, I, I, I think like we've we've talked about Tate. There's tons of information uh, for you guys out there if you want to take a look at it more. Um, what this show is actually going to be about, for the most part, is first off, what the effect of this on G2 is going to be or should be, as well as the broader topic of, uh, frankly, m misogyny within the, the esports industry, because the core the core factor of why this got so big was the accusations, you know, the 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 discussion, I should say, about misogyny that was happening as a result of this guy appearing in Carlos's video, uh, the the potential effect of of Carlos kind of providing this guy, at, you know, putting this video of him out into the esports world, and then how a lot of this has been, I feel like, is used to distract from kind of core and continuing issues of potential misogyny that exist within the industry that I think are much more real and tangible um, and systemic within the industry, not some guy being on a video from outside the industry and then being inserted in here kind of randomly and arbitrarily, at least is like That needs to be said though, Monty. Think about this, right? The way the reaction was, was as if like they'd announced this guy was like co-CEO of G2 or something. Like what happened was Carlos is at some sort of a party now. I don't, no one even knows what that situation was. He's in, presumably he's in Dubai or something with those guys. I think that's where they're all at. They're having some party. No one even knows until Carlos does the follow-up tweet that he's apparently they're friends or whatever because it's implied when he's saying about don't I won't police my friends. What happens is Carlos posts a picture of him stood there. By the way, he's barely even in the fucking shot. It's merely the other two guys lifting the bottles up, doing like a champagne bottle raise to show that they're balling and swagging out and all that crap. And when he does this, then... That's the post. When he does that post on its own, that is just classic Carlos, by the way. You've pushed the line. You've been a little bit edgy because you're Carlos and you maybe have the fuck you money. You went a little bit over the line and now what you're seeing is what's the pushback? Will people take it that I'm just being cheeky and doing a wink like this guy's banned off the internet? I probably shouldn't be doing this. But then again, I'm G2, so don't we kind of do what the fuck... If there was a bit of that mixed in there, the problem is this. Then the public response itself was very weird because the public response... I actually thought one of the first tweets, which was someone who works for Misfits who used to work for Riot, if they know Becca, I can't remember his surname, but it's Quick Shot's wife, basically. There you go, Henry, of course. Right? She actually I thought it had the most legit tweet of all because the way she phrased it looked very careful. She basically phrased it as like, you know, she didn't say like get Carlos out or like fuck G2 or like what they doing, like the associate with the human She didn't do that. She just basically said, like, to other organizations and people, like, let's not let this guy into esports. Look, it's that. Let's not let him into esports. Now, that was the thing I couldn't handle. Is that's by the way, that's a totally valid opinion, if that's what she thinks of the person. I think as someone who's a veteran in the industry, worked for many important and companies. It's a totally legit thing to put out there among your circle of group, like the people who follow you on Twitter. She didn't attack Carlos, attacking, say like, this means he's done X, Y, and Z that's conflated with this person. And crucially, let's just be real, as far as we know, aside from that video, Andrew Tate has shown no indications he is coming into esports. He isn't announcing a venture in esports. There isn't like an esports division of the multi-market thing you're talking about. He hasn't said any. I don't think he's ever mentioned esports. We don't even know. The joke is, by the way. He knew he was in that video. 
right? I don't know. Yeah. The thing is, uh, in that, oh yeah, by the way, you think loads of like entrepreneur people aren't just hitting this guy up all the time for a fair or a selfie if they're in the same circles, etc. And also, I'll throw this out there. If you've ever watched any of his videos, I imagine he would despise esports. He's a sort of person who is like into kickboxing and real life stuff and thinks that like video games are a waste of your life and you're a moron if you play them. You're just wasting your time when you could be grinding and hustling and making all that dough. So I don't even, as far as I know, know that there's any indication he's ever coming in. I also don't know through what method would he enter esports sports and basically unless you're at the level of carlos where you're willing to be edgy like that because you think you can get away with it no one else has even shown any indications that will come in and hasn't well, come on any shows he hasn't tweeted about esports so the key thing is first of all i think that's already a, a sort of a bit of a sky is falling type scenario that isn't really a concern like and i don't think this person has any entry point to esports and if anything this weekend showed it there is zero entry points no matter almost how powerful or how much influence you have in the space and then just as a quick aside I'm sorry, as much as people love to bring up those quotes, which humans said, not like God himself, like the five people you surround yourself with, uh, are the aggregate of who you are, like, that's someone that was in one video with Carlos ever. Yes, Carlos made a follow-up tweet, which was an abstract tweet about you cannot police his friends. If you know Carlos, he is actually an incredibly fair-minded person. He's the sort of person where because he himself has been misjudged and has been called toxic and terrible things, he will automatically think, oh, maybe there's more to the story, like, oh, maybe they're just misjudging this person he's been down that road himself so i think that tweet even was look a little bit was referring to that but there's a reason he didn't just use the name then so i vouch for this one person over the others so and then the last quick thing to say is this so in that scenario where it has in no way been proven this is his best friend or some super duper party he was in one video for five seconds and then he made a follow-up tweet and liked some tweets that in no context in a reasonable like like actual attempt to understand what's going on would imply he is complicit in any crimes or former actions of that individual that would be a totally unreasonable standard to hold someone to now certainly you could say if you knew about those things it's like implicated of like maybe you don't think it's as bad you could have that discussion but I think there's a lot essentially there's a lot of like fog and stuff that people lost their way on this one big time i feel like this is one of those ones where it was thrown up there and people could just read anything they wanted and project anything they wanted into it and there wasn't any interesting convos as a result sure but i think that's the core problem is like what if that's the you know if, if people can if there's so many different interpretations of this then carlos shouldn't be putting up this content as part of his duty as basically the face of g2 right because there's too much there's too much ambiguity effectively let me ask you a quick question if anyone in this call was in Vegas and Mike Tyson's there, you take a picture of him if he wants one? If he wants one? If you want one. Oh, I wouldn't want one. So then, no, would be the Richard, answer. would you take a picture of Mike Tyson? You absolutely know I would. And you, think, and you also know that I think his criminal conviction is one of the biggest miscarriages of justice in American history. But you get the point of it, what Monty's saying. I know what you're saying. He, is a, he is a convicted rapist, yes. I just don't um, think it's that simple, Monty. I know what you mean, but I think that's another case of where people love to go. Once they've seen that a line's established after the fact, they go, how could anyone ever step over that line? You obviously knew what you were doing. Like, I think this is. I think this started with Carlos being edgy with a tweet and then it spiralled and then his response to they didn't want to be controlled. And didn't want to pay, I think it just everything got worse from every side and it just expanded out into something crazy. Lauren, when you look at this from the agency perspective and like, what was your reaction to first seeing this put out there? Because again, like I had to, see, you guys all knew who this person was. Like, I was like, well, what is this? Like, why is this a big deal? And I had to go through that process. But what was your take on, on the initial reaction and then the Carlos's follow up? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot here. I think when I first look at this, the first thing I think is really about like the cost benefit analysis of posting something like this, like, and kind of interrogating, like what, what is the reason and what is the mindset for posting content with someone who is so incredibly radioactive? Um, because it's one thing for them to, to be friends offline and to have a relationship one-on-one, -on -one, not saying it's right or wrong or anything other than that. It's just like that exists. And then there's a choice to publicize that relationship. And that's where it falls apart for me. Like I just generally feel like very, very perplexed by making the decision to like publicly declare any sort of association with someone like Andrew Tate. Um, you know, I, I tweeted yesterday something basically to the effect of like, 
if I went to a restaurant and I ran into the Tate brothers, I would be embarrassed that I chose the same place. So like the idea. Right. Listen, I'm sure their views on food don't have to comply with misogyny. They might just <laughs> like really nice food as well. No, no. On, like their views being utterly vile. Like they're also just so embarrassing. Um, not to, to be like, seen in the same place. Yes. It's right. like so goofy and so embarrassing. And to your point about like, you don't know who you're vouching for. I'm like, how are so many people choosing to die on the hill of this particular man? Like I, it does lost boys. Yeah. It just, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, by the way, as a quick aside, do you want to know something funny? Because this will come up later in the episode. Do you know, within the same week, Carlos posted a different picture and there was no for all. Do you know what it was with? It was with people who actually are like, they're some sorts of like businessmen from the Middle East who in theory, it's implicated, would be involved with much, much worse things than Andrew Tate. But I will say, I noticed no one in esports said, get them out of esports. Don't, how dare you? You're so, and weirdly, that one never came up. That's why I just say, if we're going to make it like there's these hard and fast lines, well, then they're hard and fast lines. They can't just be moved as we choose. Like, we're going to have the line. I'm, I'm yeah. with you guys. If you want the line, make the line. But let's let's hold the line. Let's not let yeah. people walk, walk over because they're a bit richer, you know? Yeah, I think I think we'll get into that. And like that is like the teaser. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the issue that we're going to discuss here, because I think what was frustrating for me about this is not minimizing what what was happening here, but also the you know, the fact that we need to really deal with the treatment of women as it as it is uh, in the esports industry. And we can actually hopefully affect some of these changes or help affect some of these changes by shining the light on them. But by putting these little distractions of the, you know, internet moron of the week and having a, you know, a crucifixion of this guy who may or may not deserve it. Sounds like he probably does. Um, but it, it distracts from actually making systemic changes that are necessary. So when you look at this from an agency perspective, Lauren, like, what do you think the knock-on effect of this is going to be for G2? Because I think that's going to be a major conversation. As we are recording this show, one thing that happened is it looks like they were denied partnership in Valorant. Uh, that's the, the new stories that are coming out, which I speculated on Twitter might actually happen as a result of this. Um, but do you, do you see any clapback coming from potentially G2 partner, part, partnerships? Because you have continue and have worked at major agencies. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the the third step of the his friendship with Andrew Tate existing, him posting content about it, the third step in that is bringing the G2 brand into the tweet. It wasn't just I was partying with Andrew Tate this weekend, like the verbiage of the tweet explicitly says yesterday we celebrated G2's world championship, which I think like, yeah, then again, like brings the association back to oh, yeah. somebody who's associated with the organization. Um, and so, you know, listen, you know, esports teams, many of them, and you look at, you know, hundred thieves and how closely that brand is tied to Nate shots personality. And you look at, you know, something, you know, there are many, many examples across the industry of the founder, because these companies, you know, in a lot of cases started really small, the character and personality of that person really starts to inform the DNA of the brand and really starts to kind of shape what that brand looks like as it gets bigger and bigger. And I think Carlos has really, really strongly influenced what the G2 brand has become. And he's so strongly associated with the G2 brand in a way that, you know, I would argue like 100 Thieves and Nade Shot are no longer like this in the way that I think G2 and and Carlos still remain. Yes, um, I agree so I think that is, that is where this gets particularly tricky um, is just sort of like, untangling what that looks like. I mean, from a, you know, G2 is a really big company at this point. Like, I don't know exactly how many employees they have, but, you know, many rosters, many titles, they've got a lot of people working for them. Like they're, the organization is much, much bigger than one man at this point. Um, so I think, you know, 
the pylon of G2 as an organization and punishing employees and, you know, things, this is something that they have absolutely no control over. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is the, the very tricky part of closely tying a, a personal identity to a corporate one. By the way, I will also say, even though I totally agree, like essentially G2, like a minimum, Carlos is the spirit animal of G2. Like as he goes, it's perceived so G2 goes. But I will say, this is one thing to say. One video does not undo the good that G2 of the organization has done. This has been one of the foremost organizations for promoting the best women in esports. They have hired some of the best streamers and content creators to work for them who are women. They have had one of the best CSGO and Valorant game changer, whatever they call it, teams in the, in the entire time and have always been at the forefront of bringing those teams through. So I also don't think you can just tar all of G2 in this particular regard. As you've seen, G2 themselves have taken disciplinary action against Carlos pretty much immediately. And if you know the kinds of money people like him make, not small actions either. It wasn't just a slap on the wrist necessarily. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, the, the issue I've got here is like, uh, you know, I've been on this same ride that Carlos was on when he did this. The 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 fuck up merry-go-round where every cycle you can just get off, but you fuck up again and you can get off now and it's still not that bad, but your ego won't let you get off. So you fuck up again and, and eventually the ride just stops and you've destroyed everything. And I've definitely done that. And big egos uh, and people who think they're, you know... People who want to present a image of strength, like you can't get me. I'll do what I want. You don't get to be the boss of me. I worked hard to get to where I am. You don't get to tell me what to do. If that's your, you know, kind of like ethos, if that's the like little voice inside your head, uh, you're always going to be on this fuck up merry go round. And Carlos did this. So the first thing, uh, what you come on, you know what Andrew Tate's all about. You know, you've seen him be deplatformed a million times. You've seen fucking Logan Paul. Or was it Jake Paul? I don't know. I'm, I can't tell them two fuckers apart. I'm a boomer. I shouldn't be able to. I think to. it was Logan that did the I think Japanese forest one, if you mean that. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Either way, whatever. He's fucking up boxing. Leave, fuck that guy. But, you know, one of them said uh, that even he wouldn't, you know, fucking platform him. And that he was disappointed in other content creator. And this motherfucker takes photographs of people's loved ones, suicide corpses, for content. You know, so you know what he's about. So maybe don't take a picture of him if you know he's there. But he did. He took a little video, didn't he? Then he said in the tweet, uh, celebrating G2's uh, World Championship win or whatever the fuck. So now you've made Andrew Tate brand adjacent. It's not just you're out drinking with him. It's your brand. But don't worry, Carlos. We've only done two cycles of the fucking fuck up merry-go-round. You can get off. What's that? You don't want to get off. Now you can tweet <laughs> out, he's my fucking friend. Why would you ever say that? You don't need to say that. You don't need to declare a friendship. It doesn't even look like it's a friendship. You're about as much of a friend in that fucking photo as me walking around taking pictures of fucking people the club. in cosplay or whatever. Yeah, you but know what hey, I mean? Am I off base here? Until he made that tweet, I actually genuinely thought he was being cheeky in the sense that he might not have even been in yeah, that he, group because he, 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 he looked just on the outskirts. You know, fucking yeah, up the wind. I thought that. And I love you backwards so he can read it. Right, so he, he could have got off the merry-go-round three cycles we've done now, but he didn't. And then he called it a friendship, and now everyone starts coming. Oh, esports drama, e a chance for me to virtue signal about how good I am, even though Saudi Arabia underwrites my checks. <laughs> yes, I'm here. I'm here, everyone. Fourth time he goes around. I will. You know, he says like, what is it? I'm not going to apologize. I'm not going to let people place my relationships. This is where I draw the line. All right, okay. Fifth. Go around. Now, there's a PR statement. It's wishy-washy. He puts out a statement saying like, oh, you know, yeah, I shouldn't have done it. Or G2 understands we've hurt some people or something. And everyone's in the chat. Come and Carlos L. Come and G2L. Right? Now, maybe just let it breathe. Don't say anything else. No, what's that? Now, you're going to come out and fucking say some other shit. So, round and round and round and round and round it went. And here's the problem. 
because Carlos is so synonymous with G2, it feels proportionate to punish G2 for his sins, but it ain't because you're punishing all the players that ever would have had a spot in Valorant. Now they don't because of one guy getting a bit carried away and feeling his oats on Twitter. It's all the staff, by the way, in that game. They're probably going to have to fucking lay off all of the analysts, all of the staffs, all of the coaches. These are the people you crucified. It's like the fucking end of Spartacus with your fucking virtue signaling. And I'll tell you what, we'll get to this in a bit. I think it's even worse than you fucking recognize. I think it's even worse. I don't think it's just a Valorant spot. I think I think the whole ship is coming down over there right now. And I think you might even see a part of the ways between the two. I think we're I think we're there. So at the end of the day, here's the problem I got with it. Carlos fucked up, fucked up massively. Could have could have could have unfucked up. The issue isn't even the original video or the original tweet. It's the doubling down. And the refusal to fucking apologize and, and acknowledge is wrong. And sure, maybe he doesn't have to. But in refusing to do that, he's taking down all them people with him right now. But it's not just him. Like, he's not the one doing the crucifixions. That's y'all. And people want to take down Carlos because everyone hates big personalities, brash people who get to say what they want, do what they want because they got fuck you money in the bank. Everyone hates those guys. Carlos could be out there with a fucking cure for cancer and everything. Some cunt would still want to take him down. He's too brash. He's too mean for me. How dare he voice his own opinion? I don't get to do that in my job. People are just bitter, miserable assholes on the internet. So yeah, he would still have to go through that. But here's the problem. All those people who've signed up to fucking, you know, cast the stone at Carlos, congratulations. You just fucking robbed a Valorant team of their fucking hopes and dreams for at least a year, probably longer. You just got a bunch of staff fucking fired, and for what? So you can go slithering back to fucking Riot Games and pretend they didn't sign a hundred million dollar lawsuit for sexual discrimination. Fuck all of you punks. You yep. got no here's, principles. Uh, here's the segue, by the way, because here's the key point. Everyone's going to do the classic thing. It's what about ism? No, stay on topic. Not, no, no, no. Here's the problem. All you had to say was, I don't like Andrew Tate. You can even say you hate him. You can even say he's the worst thing to ever. But say what you like, right? But as soon as you say these two lines, you say he can't come in esports because he's a misogynist. And then you say he doesn't belong in esports. You're done fucked up there. Because as soon as you said those two things, it implied logically that you also would be against anyone who was a worse misogynist or someone with a history of misogyny. They couldn't be in esports. And since he said belong, you just drew another line and you said who can come into esports and who aren't. So I ho seriously hope when we get to the discussion later about China and Saudi Arabia that no one's done anything worse than Andrew Tate. Because if they have, you're all done fucked up if you're taking the money from them. You're all done fucked up if you work with them. And if you imply that the people that surround you are the aggregate of who you are and people that you choose to associate is who you are, and if you work with a company, you call them friends and family, then that's who you are. Then if they're Saudi Arabia and China, you're now complicit in all their crimes. The crimes of countries. Because what we're going to get to later, by the way, guys, is this isn't like if you have this discussion, like I can bang on like ESL all day long about having the Air Force sponsorship. It's not like they literally were like, right, the literal like leader of the fuck, commander of the army is like, right, we need actually like, ESL to promote the Air Force so that we can actually go next month and kill people in a bombing right that would be heinous except that's basically what is happening in esports like you're going to find out the word basically didn't even do much heavy lifting there so it's all right we'll tease this out because that's the key thing the people who actually demanded this become a conversation where we turn the spotlight around and look at the ugly bloody people in the audience are the ones who made these statements it logically infers that you want those discussions to happen in fact think about what a lot yeah. of the praise was about it was about the idea of finally someone's calling this person out finally we're we're not going to stand for misogyny. Well, you know what, guys? Let's call people out. Let's not stand for misogyny in the industry. Yep. So let's look for real misogyny and real yep. people to call out. You know, by all means, I, I'm in favor of having this conversation that resulted from Andrew Tate. But the knock-on effect of that is, is we have to have this conversation about the real issues that exist within this industry. And we'll we'll start talking about that. Before we do, I just want to put a capstone on the, the Carlos stuff and, like, the effect of this for G2 so you guys understand the stakes are at play. So... Almost certainly, within the team agreement that Riot has has signed with G2, there is going to be some clause about not defaming the league um, or br bringing bad publicity to the league. Now, I'm not sure that posting a video with this guy and then saying that you can hang out with whoever you want to really fits like a legal standard of defaming the league because you're not actually co-signing any beliefs uh, in this. It's not like Carlos said, I agree with everything this guy said, or, um, you know, it, it's really ambiguous. So I don't think that that is going to reach any kind of threshold where Riot can reasonably 
punish him. Um, but as we've seen, if the rumors are to be believed that are coming out while we're recording this right now, G2 was accepted into the North American uh, partnership position, which, by the way, has been a goal of G2's for a long time. Carlos moved to New York um, or is moving to New York. I forget which one it is, if he's already there or not. Um, they actually wanted, they applied uh, when when franchising occurred for the LCS slot, not the LEC slot. Uh, initially, and they asked Riot to do that. Riot said, no, you guys need to stay in Europe. But G2 has been pushing to be become a more globalized brand when they have been mostly a European one up until this point in time. And so them seemingly getting the NA slot for Valorant, the NA partnership, and then now it being revoked is a big deal. So while Riot can't necessarily say Anything with their agreement, potentially, as it stands right now, we're still waiting to see if there is going to be some announcement for Riot. I imagine there already would have been a punishment if one was going to be issued, um, but they may be doing a deeper dive on it. The thing is, is what they can do is just deny them access to games in the future, right? And it seems like that's what's happening. Same thing, by the way, appears to be happening to TSM, again, for kind of unforced errors from the, the CEO and figurehead of the company. They couldn't. They couldn't really do anything besides give Reggie the max fine for what was going on at TSM because he didn't break any laws as, as it results in, in terms of employment. He was a jerk, not a bigot, right? Um, I just think it's really lucky that Riot didn't get kicked out of their own pro program for all the shit they've done. <laughs> of but, course, yeah, they obviously of course, survived that one, so fair enough. So I actually don't think that anything is going to happen to Carlos because... Um, you know, people are going to turn against G2. The fans are going to turn against G2 because they don't want to, they don't like these beliefs. Um, the employees are probably going to turn against G2 because they don't like these beliefs. The sponsors are going to turn against G2 because they don't like the beliefs. And at least other, they say they don't. <laughs> sure. Uh, and, you know, other entities like publishers, such as Riot and others, are going to think twice about having this organization participate with them. So the penalties are going to be huge no matter what. And indeed, sound like they already are huge, at least in the scope of Valorant. Um, but I'm not sure if we're actually going to see any direct punishment from Riot because I just don't think it meets a standard when Carlos himself is not Mate, what making a standards? statement about his beliefs. This right, is yeah, an industry course. where people will claim, remember, if you're accused of a crime, the standard we are doing is you did the crime. That's what we're holding people. So by that logic, there are literal rapists who might play in some of these leagues. That's a real standard. Where's the standard? That's what I'm saying. There isn't. What the point on this one is, you can think it's as bad as you want and they punish them as much. They, this is what you call making an example of someone. And if you know my position, it's always been crystal clear. You don't make examples of people because what that always means is not, I'm going to make an example and give the appropriate punishment. We all know that's a euphemism for, I'm going to come down on this motherfucker like a ton of bricks, punish them as hard as possible. And this is the classic riot slash blizzard approach. And the reason I'm going to to do it is because I don't like to actually police the scene. I don't like to actually hold each person accountable, proportionate to what they have done and said. So what I do is every now and then when one scenario goes too far in the optics, I essentially kill that person metaphorically so that everyone else knows death penalty if you're the one that I select. Same with I buy power getting banned in CSGO. Same with certain scenarios that people said political things within Blizzard games about certain large countries that fucking own all of League of Legends. Like this has happened time and time and time again so as you'll find there is going to be no standard once you start getting into these other areas like the standard will evaporate immediately so I agree Monty in theory that's what they would all say they're doing but you will later find out they have no problem doing business and being associated with and owned by people who not only espouse these views build societies off it and literally punish kill and abuse women all you'll right. find this out so are, do we have any final thoughts on the, the Carlos issue before we go into the, the larger industry issue? Because I think it's probably about time for that. Yeah, sure. I, I, I just want to say if it does end up being like some sort of existential part in other ways, because obviously the part we've left out is he is technically on leave right now. He's been sent away by the company. That's not at his behest. That's eight weeks away from the company, I'm guessing, so they can try and scramble and unfuck the mess that, sure, he's put them in. Uh, but I, I, knowing, knowing Carlos, I don't think he's going to be happy about that. 
I don't think he's going to be happy about being undermined like that publicly after what he said. It's very clear that you're not going to get the standard esports apology. What you're always supposed to do when the mob comes around is you're supposed to apologize no matter what it is, right? And maybe an apology is warranted here. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying standard protocol, whether it's warranted or not, is to drop to your knees and apologize and beg for fucking clemency because you're the villain of the day and you're in stone, stone, stone. You're just getting wrecked and then they're going to go and do something else within four eight hours because it's not about principles it's not about values it's about filling their fucking dead empty lives with entertainment it's recreational outrage that's all it ever is so he's not playing that game and hasn't apologized suggests very heavily to me that there's more to come to this story and when it does let's say for example imagine a world where carlos leaves how do we feel about that yeah I mean, Lauren, do you think it's time with the Reggie and the Carlos stuff to kind of disentangle esports brands from their major personalities and founders at, at this point? Then I would say like that's not just true in the cases where it becomes a liability. Like it's true even when the center personality is doing really good things for the brand. Like I am just a believer in building something completely separate from individuals so that this isn't even doesn't ever become a potential eventuality um so you know i think it is <clears throat> well time to disentangle the the identity and personality of a founder or a ceo with the rest of the brand um because to you know the point of of whatever that everyone is making is like these companies are big. They have a lot going on. Like they don't deserve to, to be punished for what, you know, Carlos does on a weekend night. Like it's, you know, it's just, it's not fair. And, you know, I think it just, it shows how delicate and how precarious the whole situation becomes when, um, you know, there is some, uh, uh, you know, people are flawed. They make mistakes. Like it, it's inevitable. And, you know, disentangling as much as possible, I think, is really, really necessary. Um, I also think just, you know, circling back to something Richard had said about the the fuck up merry-go-round, like, the biggest advice I can always give is log off. Like, there are just so, so many times in this situation and in many, many others where, like, everyone would have really benefited from just simply stepping away. And I think in the middle of Carlos putting out PR statements, G2 releasing statements, people were looking at Carlos's liked tweets and seeing a ton of defensive Andrew Tate jokes, you know, things praising him, et cetera, et cetera. And so it, it, it just looks so incredibly contradictory to the point where like, I don't know it what an apology, what that, what purpose that really serves at this point and how genuinely people will interpret that. It's like yeah. they're seeing one action taken on the public facing Twitter account and another action being taken in the likes. And, you know, at, at this point, I think it's just like, you know, I have nothing to say other than like, logging off should have happened a, a long, long time ago. Here's the issue. Essentially, Richard, if I had to speculate, I don't think Carlos will bend the knee. I actually think that's actually what this entire exercise was about. It meant that essentially it was always going to come to this point because in esports, mm. if you're going to be a public facing figure, and especially if you want to be partners with these giant companies, you're going to have to bend the knee. That is just the way the mainstream world works now. And as you'll see later in the convo, it's only going to get darker and darker who you bend the knee to. It'll eventually be mm. Sauron himself. At the moment, maybe it's Saruman, you're just doing it too. So in this scenario, <laughs> brilliant, brilliant fucking analogy as well. Right? So in this case, I'll also say this as well. Well, my other problem with this is because Carlos will never bend the knee, I agree with Lauren from like an agent slash a marketing perspective, there is no way back. But the issue is, as a man, he is not like irredeemable because of this or committed some like vast offense. It's all optics and marketing. Like, no, yeah. he has literally never agreed with any of these views publicly. He has never espoused any of the things that yep. person did. And so to pretend as people will, like all he did was he like roared G2 to the top, almost like he just did nothing. Because you notice these people are all hardcore socialists who despise people like 
like Carlos and want him taken down. That's why they even say stupid stuff like, good CEO should get money taken off them. Like, he's not Bezos, you fucking idiot. It's just a guy in esports who was an entrepreneur and literally from being a player built a whole company. Which, which is very legit. impressive. Here's the point. <laughs> Without that fucking personality, there is no G2 with all these people hired now. Yep. You know what? It's going to suck for some of those people who get hired, laid off, or maybe the company goes downhill. But let's be real. Then Carlos giveth and Carlos take it away. There never was a G2 like that. They never had these gigs without him. He built the whole fucking branding that everyone's loving. All the fans came because yep. of his branding, his yep. personality. So the idea that all the good he's done is like t it's wiped away with the immortal black mark sin of liking some tweets, making an abstract point about you can't please his friends and posting a stupid ill-advised tweet that was edgy about a guy who's been banned off the internet who in no context is coming to esports. That can't be the scale if Anubis is weighing his soul. It can't be and it will not be as long as I'm in this industry. Yeah, and I, I think this is this is where we can transition this conversation because my confusion as a result of this happening was, okay, well, if everybody wants to have a conversation about misogyny in this space, where was this conversation, especially as it relates to, to League of Legends, when Riot was issued this fine? Because to, to go back in time, guys, for, for those of you who don't know, basically the state of California... Um, decided that Riot had basically systematically discriminated or harassed every female employee who had ever worked for Riot uh, up until a certain point in time. And the initial uh, settlement was found to be, Richard, you know, kind of fraudulent because there was some collusion going on between Riot and, um, and the government, right, uh, to set a lower price point for the hmm. fine and later that Tenfold, was i believe i think the original settlement they were angling for about 10 million dollars originally and then uh the department of fair employment and housing in california yes. got wind of that and uh it's been a long time since i covered this story obviously it was 2018 so apologies if some of the details are sketchy but yeah basically they had uh back channeled to the law firm to essentially get uh a lower payout this, yeah. this is what I mean about Riot and their lip service. They, they, they yeah. don't give a fuck. They have no values right. as a company. So, so a judge then later found that there had been some level of illicit collusion, and then that figure went up to $100 million, which was then paid out in various proportions to female employees at Riot. Mm. And – so what I find very what I found very frustrating about well, this the story is, stops there, Monty. That's it. They just paid it. some money out. There wasn't yes, like exactly. these no, are the culture here. leaders. Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, I got I got this one, man. Like here, here was my my frustration is if we want to have a conversation about holding people accountable for being adjacent to people who have espoused misogynist beliefs or taken misogynist actions, the biggest issue is that. In the heat of this $100 million fine and Riot admitting that they created this culture within the company, exactly zero executives from Riot were terminated as a result of this scandal. I am unaware of any other corporate scandal of this scale that resulted in zero terminations of the people who created that culture. Mate, I'll you tell you an obvious one that should have been offered to the dogs anyway. Whoever greenlit back channeling to the other lawyers or the other person who <laughs> fucked them I mean, harder. Forget even the rate sex about that. You could nail. That'll be on the way of a paper what, trail what's, for that. What's so, what's so wild about Riot is they stress that the culture is the most important thing at the company. And yet, again, when we saw the Neon deal, they say this isn't part of our culture. But if it's not part of your culture, you need to fire the people who who inked that deal because they don't align with your culture. Is culture the also most important not true. thing or not? Richard's reporting, reported, you can tell the story, right, Richard, that he was actually messaged behind the scenes the opposite. This was yeah. a totally fine deal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, what it what it later transpired was while the European office felt very strongly about it in the European, because it was during LEC, uh, and in particular Berlin uh, were having their Pride uh, Week, Pride Festival there, um, they felt it would be terrible optics to announce the deal at that time. And then, obviously, because that's how cynical they are. Uh, and, and, and by the way, I'm sure their partners wouldn't have wanted it either. Uh, because we all know their beliefs. But um, they, th then what happened was when the NA office came in, basically they were like, listen, the only thing we did wrong was the timing and the framing. The actual deal itself is perfectly fine and something we will revisit at a later date. So yeah. much for the culture.
Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. And like to me, at least with the Activision Blizzard stuff, when all of the information about their mistreatment employees, remember, this is this is a company who has not yet, I say yet, because we don't know what's going to happen, not yet been fined by the same California entity that that find riot that could happen in the future it took years for riot to to go through the whole process of this and that could be definitely coming in you know a year or whatever down the line but activision blizzard the employees stood up they criticized the the leadership of activision blizzard and people like major management changes occurred like the president of the company stepped down and they made all of these big changes riot did nothing they, they did nothing they said we changed our, you know, just wave the magic wand. We changed our culture, guys. No, nothing. They like hired some new people, but they didn't get rid of the old people. Somebody had to be responsible for this at Riot and was never held accountable. And who was it? And it certainly wasn't the Riot employees standing up at the time, which is why I said what I said. And so then to see, of course, because this happens is like, I'm not a big fan of whataboutism either, guys, or people saying like, oh, well, you know, that whole stupid cartoon, like, oh, you participate in society. Like, how interesting. You know the meme that I'm oh, talking about. recently, yeah. Uh... So, so here's the thing. I am not, in fact, and never intended, and it was clear from my tweet, never intended to criticize, say you have to stand up for absolutely everything. But if you are going to say we cannot allow misogyny within esports you also have to go back and say why didn't we criticize riot more viciously publicly because as far as i can tell it was just like you know the horsemen basically who were who are making comments about this because everyone else is involved in a in a legally binding relationship with riot because you're either working directly for riot you are in a legal contract as a team with riot you want to be in a legal contract with the team at Riot because you're applying for Valorant or other future games, right? And you don't want to be cut off. Or you're a co-streamer who will get your rights removed if you criticize Riot. So, you know, intelligently for them, they've wrapped up an enormous amount of the community who can say everything. But as Activision Blizzard shows, if there are enough people willing to say something and speak out against it, the changes can occur and maybe the same punishment, it probably will fall on a few people who are going to be punished as a result of taking these actions. But this is the issue, is that when you talk about whataboutism, it's not a separate issue. We are talking about the exact same issue and the fundamental problems of you know, systemic discrimination against women in this industry. And I think nobody wants that here. Nobody's like, yes, I think you know this industry should be misogynistic or has treated women the best. We can tell it hasn't, right? Yeah, and but just, you have to just be a quick point on about me. that view. Just a quick point there, though. Here, here's what makes it even worse. It's not just people being silent about this, or rather, not even silent. They go, yeah, right, it was bad, sorry. And then they go and they work with them, and they work with the same people. The, the, the reality is there were people that actively carried water for the same fucking regime that did all this shit. Now, keep in mind, when I say regime, they ain't changed nobody, right? We all agree. Not one high-level management figure got shit-canned over a $100 million fucking dollar loss Suit. That's weird, isn't it? Because I but thought Mark Merrill cried, Richard. Yeah, exactly. I was just getting at that. Because I thought the esports standard, like Carlos has to go on leave for eight weeks. It's all Carlos's fault about G2, right? Like it's all Carlos. Whatever happened to CEOs having to fall on their fucking swords? It's weird when it's Mark Merrill. It's weird when it's Bobby Kotick. They get a ride again. They got nine fucking lives, right? Mark Merrill can come out to a town hall, listen to women telling their stories uh, about their, their abuse and their experiences and go, Shh, I'm going to stop you there because you're moving me to tears <laughs> and take over the whole fucking thing because he's a garbage human being, right? Like and no self-awareness, that fucker. So here's the interesting part, right? If, if if that's the appreciable standard, why did nobody haul him over the coals? And not only did you not haul him over the coals, there was motherfuckers like Travis, your boy, literally carried water for them. Literally did that soft layup interview with Mark Merrill. Sit down interview. First since the scandal. How hard hitting will the questions be? Travis, your questions hit like a fucking pillow, you fucking pussy. Right? And he asked him not one question. And not only did he not ask him one serious question about the abuse women got when mark merrill said something stupid travis fucking corrected him and said well i don't think you mean that mark like it's a joke it's a joke this industry like if you ever fucking carried water for that that guy for mark merrill and riot 
I'm sorry, homie. By your rules, you're complicit in all the crimes, all the terrible, heinous things they did to women. And I think you've got some soul searching to do, brother. There was even people who were higher ups at Riot that I saw were loving when the Blizzard one dropped and they were trying to dunk on Blizzard because they were sort of being like, remember they told that lie that like, because they had a few protests or something, they, they allowed and let people have a day off or something, Richard, that like they ch implied they changed the whole culture. So they were sort of being like, ah, but look at them, everyone. Look at Blizzard though. Look what Blizzard's doing, everyone. And it's like, you didn't clean house yourselves. You never cleaned house. That's what the whole point we're making is. Yeah, I mean, I've ne literally never seen a corporate scandal at this scale that did not result in some sort of sacrificial lamb um yeah. never truly have never ever seen it so <laughs> i mean i find it the, the fact that this has just been entirely swept under the rug is a remarkable uh you know testament to riot's level of control over the esports scene which should terrify you guys it should absolutely terrify easier you. than that monty right crazier than that this is 2018 right this story breaks great reporting by cecilia danastasi i think she's over at uh forbes now i think she was at wired briefly i think she is at forbes now with jason anyway right like by 2020, by the time the settlement's all getting written out and people have agreed. By the way, there's still other lawsuits out there, individual lawsuits. People that didn't just want to go along for the class action because they felt their grievances were so fucking heinous. And by the way, if you go read some of the contents of these uh, lawsuits, if there's even a fraction of truth in the allegations, good on them. I hope they fucking take them to the cleaners. But here's the thing. The media, right, They because Riot, they did like a thing where, uh, hey, we want to get women into coding. So we're doing a promotional thing. Come and learn to code at Riot Games. Uh, women only. Come and come and learn. And everyone and 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 journalists, the same journalists who were talking about how we have to have a crucible about misogyny in our industry, literally wrote glowing reviews about how Riot had changed. They've changed now, guys. They've done one token gesture. It's totally fine. The same fucking journalists. It's unbelievable the shit these companies get away with. And we're just talking about Riot. We can get onto Activision Blizzard. Motherfuckers in, in their lunch break stealing breast milk from lactating women. Like, we know all the gory fucking details. Where, where, I mean, the, where? the woman the woman who killed herself at least partially... Dude, Where, through exactly. her nude who photos pay, who being shared pays around. for that fucking sin? Who pays for that? And I'm meant to think these guys in this esport in esports industry are fucking serious when they go work an event with them. I'm blacklisted by Activision Blizzard. Good. I'm on the right fucking side. You know that phrase they all love to use? The right side of history. My conscience is fucking clear. These cunts don't call me on the fucking phone to come work for them because they know what side my bread is buttered. I'm not creepy fucking weirdos like that. I never went up to the Cosby suite, which you all fucking knew about, and then acted surprised and pretended it was because of the carpet and not because people were fucking and spiking drinks and doing fuck knows what else. Our industry's been garbage for a long fucking time. There's shit going on behind the scenes. Evil. FGC. Women got their fucking drink spiked like two evos ago. En masse. Yes, there was a bunch of stories. Yeah. There, was, there was a female reporter I know said some guy like tried to literally just like fucking, he thought she was sleepy and, and make, tried to make a move and I'm telling you guys, there are genuine fucking bad fucking people in this business working at all these companies and the, the things people get upset about you know what i mean bad tweets bad opinions like fuck me guys i mean you need to open your fucking eyes i think if, that's why if, they do it though dude i think what happens is because they don't want to address the elephant in the room they find a smaller issue and they pour correct. all their legitimate outrage against people horrible to women is that they just pour it into that one vector you notice by the way andrew tate doesn't sign their chicks he isn't going to hire them for the next event he ain't running another game in a franchise league and he's not going to get blacklist them there's no cost to them to call him out there's a cost as richard says if you have all these business connections and by the way just as an aside from the little i know about the corporate culture when you can't get a single fall guy in the executives that means they all know where the motherfucking bodies are buried yep. and it's it's probably so insane a house of cards that if you pulled one out, they're all coming down. So what they had to basically do, that usually means is you circle the wagons and you go, you know what? Unless they take the whole company down, we're just all going to agree none of us get fired. That's very alarming in itself if we're using phrases like belong in esports. You have to understand, to people like me and Richard, Riot are fucking Johnny come lately. They didn't build esports. They just took Dota and made a shit version of it with like weeb skins on it, like 
fair play. You made some good scratch off it. Then you sold out to China, and we'll get to that later, won't we? Because it goes fucking crazy at that point in time. Oh, as a quick aside, I have a very brief abstract point I want to make at this point, though, because I do think that in the same way as... There's no fucking sides. Like, surely everyone's against, like, fucking horrible things happening to women. I don't really know that there's a party that represents that. That somehow is a fucking, like, a beachhead front in that esports. Like, we're going to defend this position, men. Line up. And no one wants it. So the question is, how do you deal with it, though? How do you call it out? How do you frame these conversations? And one problem I've noticed is the people who are saying everything here, Carlos is misogyny, G2's misogyny, everyone who sit likes and Andrew Tate tweets misogyny, the same people who were doing that, though, also so then get the, get back sometimes what I think is a totally illegitimate argument themselves, which is, ah, oh, but you've worked with Riot. Ah, oh, you are a caster for Riot, right? The question is, this is a very serious point to make, to what degree do you work with Riot? Like, it's not the case that every person who ever takes a dime from Riot is implicated in those crimes. That's not the way at all. I mean, some of these people might have been around at the time. So I do think there's a case of, like, are you someone who maybe internally, this has happened, there are real people who've done this. It's just they can't come out publicly with it. There are people who fought these battles internally within Riot, who fought these battles internally within the Riot ecosystem to get people moved out, to get people who were dangerous pushed out of positions, to report on them, to at least run things up, to give information to journalists. Tell you what, people like me and Richard couldn't reveal these things if there was nobody inside the companies. You need those people who are sort of like, they don't, they haven't got the courage to fully come right out and quit the job and go entirely, but they have a conscience. And when it presses on their conscience, they don't just sit back and say nothing or circle the wagons with the others. They will leak information. Sometimes, by the way, that will have personal costs behind the scenes. If you think Riot's vindictive publicly, you should see them fucking internally. It's outrageous. They'll, they'll tear you up completely. And the joke is, they'll be the ones outraged you called them out they'll be the ones how dare you do that you're below me in the structure i made this business there's a load of that going on so i don't think everyone who works for riots like an idiot and just sold out and they've accomplished it in like crimes against women or they've abused it no there are tons of good people who are in this area there are at least tons of neutral people you can't always just turn that back on them all the time because actually i'll give you a quick example even though i agree it's not like it wasn't like some fucking thing you should get like a Nobel prize for fair play to medic when people tried using that angle on him and he just immediately said okay fuck riot and fuck the way they treat women is that good enough for you like guess what you won't see many people even internally do that this yep. guy did it publicly by the way when he's just taken a break from Worlds the biggest tournament of the year and he's like the premier caster on one of their best broadcasts he, be could, he could easily get fucking shit canned off this and by the way they're so smart they won't do it because of this reason they'll find another reason to do it so actually when people do that it doesn't matter whether I agree with him doesn't matter whether I like him I'll give him respect for at least being consistent because that's all I ask and I think that's pretty much Monty's position just be consistent whatever energy you're bringing to Andrew Tate bring it to the Riot execs whatever energy you're bringing to like the idea of like this person doesn't belong in esports well then let's talk Saudi Arabia let's talk names let's talk countries and what they're doing and let's keep that energy that you're a gatekeeper because that's one thing I noticed me and Richard have really changed on the last 10 years we used to because esports was a really cool wide open space without a lot of dangerous actors we used to think let's try not to gatekeep people because there's going to be people from different spaces demo graphics that are going to come in and initially there'll be some friction because they're outsiders they don't know us we don't know them it's going to take time I used to think let's get rid of gatekeeping because I'm a cool guy you're a cool guy let's see what we're doing here right but actually we need to gatekeep but let's gatekeep the fucking bad people out let's not just like fire an arrow into one dodgy looking traveller guy who's coming in he's some sort of dodgy merchant and then let the fucking evil hordes in the back way to just take over the whole city we have to gatekeep appropriately to keep the wrong people out yeah, I think there's a lot to, I mean, listen, my background is in strategy. I think about human behavior a lot. And I think I've realized after observing, um, you know, a lot of discourse about a ton of different issues in esports, you know, obviously this is only over the last 10 years and you guys have been doing this for a lot longer than I have. But I think there's, a couple of things at play. One of them is really that the idea that these circumstances are oftentimes so nuanced that mul what I really wish I could communicate to everyone in the industry is that multiple things can can be and are true at the same time. Um, I think that, you know, there's a in terms of certain issues that come up within within the industry and with Riot specifically, um, 
with Andrew Tate, it's really easy to pile on. He's one person. He says his beliefs really clearly, and they are Mm -hmm. absolutely abhorrent. And so just like cognitively, it's really easy for me to understand, comprehend, and reject that. And I think the more layers you add between the everyday consumer and the issue, the harder it becomes to comprehend. And this is obviously going into something that's like about individual, you know, one-to-one level misogyny versus like much larger systemic issues. Um, You know, I think when people think about, you know, larger governmental regimes and the sources of capital and all of these things that go into, you know, bigger corporate culture, it becomes like, well, that that seems like a lot. That's not as easy for me to wrap my head around. That's just, there's way too much happening there for me to really like grasp the entirety of the situation and form an opinion. Whereas like, it's really easy to reject someone like Andrew Tate, if that makes sense. Sure. To be fair, Riot's never put out a statement saying like we hate women or silly things like that, have they? So I, I get it. it's very, it's very, it's immediately palatable that you distaste the Andrew Tate guy. Yeah, that's a good. That's the, really good the way answer. that you need, the way people need to think about it, though, and this is how I've always framed it, and this is why I think this Andrew Tate outrage is so sort of like just fucking. It's dull. It, 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 like I say, it's recreational outrage. You think about proportional harm. That's how you have to think about this stuff. Like how much harm. Can Andrew Tate realistically do compared to, let's scale it up, Riot Games or Activision Blizzard to huge media conglomerates, multimedia conglomerates, now Riot, obviously. And how much harm have they done? Yeah, exactly. And how much harm have they done? And when we think about, you know, systemic sexism, we think about, you know, women being passed over for promotions, their expertise. We talk about literal sexual assault, sexual harassment in the workplace. You think about the psychological harm, the depression. You think about, for example, in the Activision Blizzard case where one woman was driven to suicide by the things that happened allegedly, you know, so that to me you look at that level of harm and you go oh well that's obviously greater than this thing here so we should be more outraged about that and then if you scale it up again how much harm is a fucking regime that does that literally treats women as second class citizen gonna do uh and 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 you know just recently which you'll notice no one in esports no one in esports even tweeted about this there was a student there was two women actually twitter got infiltrated by a saudi arabian agent they got all of the information about saudi arabian dissidents pieced the fuck out from the company leaked that information back to that regime right and then now we've had two women one of which was a student in leeds for their tweets they've been in prison 34 years this young woman's gonna get and, you know, they're sponsoring a women's league in esports. And if you think these two things aren't related, if you think one isn't the misdirection so they can get away with a magic trick and doing whatever the fuck they want, women in their own country, that's this is how sports washing works. So, again, let's scale up the harm. So why are we not outraged about it? Why are all the people who had time to pick up a rock and launch it at Carlos's head when he was buried up to his neck going, look, I, I, I might have fucked this up, guys. I don't know. But well, where was the analogy, really? I didn't mean to, but you know, where, 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 where was the fucking energy then? And that's why these people get called out yep. for being hypocrites and being pathetic yep. because you don't take on the big fights. You're not really willing to march with women. You're not really willing to stand with women because if there's an opponent who might, you know, be cutting you a check or might be blackballing you out the industry, all of a sudden you get real quiet about it. You're moral cowards and you need to have that crucible. You need to talk about that among yourselves. Because you might have got Carlos, I guarantee you're not coming for the fight with Mark Merrill. You're not coming for the fight with Saudi Arabia. Only a handful of people are. Is the thing, essentially I'll phrase it like this. People are outraged by ideas Andrew Tate expressed publicly. That was especially it. People are more outraged by the line that said women are property or whatever than they are actually about whatever may have happened with his past and did he get involved in this and was the trafficking case real. They're more outraged by the statement, right? The implication of what the idea means. 
a guy who has no legal recourse to protect himself if he does those things. He can be arrested by the police. Those things are all illegal in countries to do. You're not allowed to do those things in Romania or any Western country, by the way. Those are absolutely on the books. You will go to prison if you rape people, if you exploit them, if you pimp them, if you if you abuse them, if you kill them. Now, in Saudi Arabia and certain other countries, some of these things are actually legal. Some of these things are actually... The government will be protected and they will be the ones who do it against you. So now we're not even talking just raw culture. There better not be people from that government directly connected with esports there better not be people who even say i am hands-on with if these things happen then you are making the statement by your outrage over here that it is performative you don't like the sound of something happening that you can't actually establish it has happened but you're fine with it actually happening as long as those people have too much power they're too big to fail as it were that implies you aren't against that you don't care about it you only care it's called a luxury belief when it has no cost you can just fuck around with it as soon as it has any cost money fame like in this particular case, you could get fired. By the way, I'd even say, let's be real, this is why it's actually tough to bring it up on shorts. There could be actual physical, real-world recourse as to what could happen if you keep speaking out about these things. But guess what? That's why if you want to be the the hero in your imaginary movie who stands up... You know when everyone gets that famous picture of a Nazi rally in Germany and there's the one guy who wouldn't do the heil, he's like this, and they all go in their mind, that's me, that's exactly who I'd be in history. You're not. Because he had to do that, by the way, knowing he might just get taken outside and shot like those people who stopped clapping for Stalin. You won't even do it when it's like a tweet. You won't even tweet against Bloody Riot. And here's the one other thing I will say is my distinction on the Riot one. It's right. On the women angle, I can't tear ev tar everyone with that brush. But my dude, you better not be bringing up certain crimes against humanity because China comes into that one then. And we all know that as well. That was implied that there was abstraction between China and Riot Games. The more you look into that, that's not the way their society works. There is a connection. They directly profit. They direct The country of China directly profits through the regime from the money made from League of Legends and games from Tencent Games. Yep. So if you work with Riot and Tencent Games, you have to at least have, have, in your mind, resolved the China debate. The women one's a separate one, and that's about culture yeah. within corporate culture. That one's one where, again, if you're going to be speaking out against certain things, be very careful, because you are implying that you're fine with the Chinese regime's behavior in this particular case, because yeah. you will essentially work to profit them. And so, just to, just as an aside, um, really quick, if you guys want to know more about that, Google Tencent Common Prosperity, because the Chinese government basically told the tech companies like Tencent and Alibaba, these are publicly traded companies, by the way, so this shouldn't be in the West, this wouldn't happen, right? They were told, you must contribute to the common prosperity of the Chinese people, and now they are giving massive amounts of their revenue direct, like directly to the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So I do just want to say one thing in terms of just like right-sizing it, the Andrew Tate of it all a little bit in terms of, you know, when we talk about things like proportional harm, um, I think while obviously Andrew Tate individually, we're talking about a very different scale from something like, you know, these systemic and, you know, global human rights violations, but I think it's important to recognize kind of what Andrew Tate represents, which is something much larger and more harmful, which is misinformation, radicalization of young men, like espousing really violent and misogynistic views. And given his platform, exposing, you know, millions of people to that ideology. Um, I mean, I wasn't exposed to it before, so. Yeah, I mean, you know, deplatforming can, certainly can have that effect. Um, but I I'm think saying, like I, I, as far as like what the effect of this was, I didn't know who he was until this Carlos thing happened. You know what I mean? Yes. But you're certainly familiar with, you know, people being radicalized by, you know, right. as so my, my, my point is, is that this actually helps, at least in my case, somebody who didn't know about him. Now I know about him. Right. Um, but yeah, I did just. That was a random aside, but one. Oh, no, 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 no. I get it. I mean, my, my respectfully, I disagree. I, I, I think there is something far more malignant about regimes that essentially pay to uh, rebuild reality around useful idiots that take that money than there is this American hysteria, particularly an American hysteria 
about misinformation and potential radicalization, which when you actually look at the numbers, it's not really happening. In fact, if you want an argument for how the system actually doesn't do what a lot of Americans claim it does, you simply have to look at how far Andrew Tate got as a fucking, you know, influencer phenomenon um, it, before he got deep, completely deplatformed and essentially unpersoned. And indeed, the outrage we're discussion, discussing today shows he's not welcome in esports. His uh, belief system uh, is, is widely, resoundedly rejected. Um, and eventually he will fade out of memory and there will be another Manosphere loser to take his place. Ad infinitum, ad nauseum, because we never actually... <laughs> the Manosphere never, Hydra cannot be killed. <laughs> exactly. We, well, because we never actually sit down and challenge the ideas, we just push people into the fucking shadows. But yeah, I, 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 I again, I, you know, I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion, Lawrence. So I hope you don't think I'm being disrespectful right now. But again, all, all due respect, I, I think there is something far more insidious about entities that have the money to essentially be able to say to someone who knows what the truth is, knows what reality is, knows what strong ethics are, knows what morality is, and says, even though you know all these things, I'm going to give you life-changing money, and you will you will turn a blind eye to all of the things you know to be evil and wrong in the world. That's a type of malevolence that you can't even combat with deplatforming. No one's willing to do it. The tech companies take that money every single day. So we've got a much bigger problem and we're going to really feel it five years from now. Once we start having tournaments and Riyadh and Israeli competitors are excluded and things like this, this is all around the corner for esports because we didn't stand up to the evil money now, today, and misinformation, disinformation, American hysteria around that. I don't know. I don't think it's the same thing. To, to be... 100% clear like so my you know my position on this is not misinterpreted I agree with you completely when you're talking about things that are at the scale of you know countrywide you know these things affect tens of millions or hundreds of millions or in the case of China billions of people um you know I do not want to be seen as equating those two things at all and to your point like the the all I wanted to say was that no, that it still does harm. I didn't get that point. I, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> no, I know exactly what you mean. I, I would just rank one above the other, but I, I wouldn't yeah. make any claim that Andrew Tate isn't doing harm. I'm, you know, I, I, I absolutely. Like, you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like, no, the, 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 I, yeah, I, I think this it was is the topic. This, this is the problem I have with this discussion. So I'll quickly relate it to the neon thing. The Neom thing had loads of people come out against the Neom thing. If people don't know, it wasn't just in League of Legends and LEC. It happened with Blast in CSGO as well. And what they did is they sent the message, same thing. These people are terrible, human rights violations, and they do not belong in esports. In fact, by the way, people might not know this, Carlos and G2 themselves did that. They also came out and said, I would never take the money from these sorts of people. By the way, that's a rare occasion of when you'd actually want an owner who could be hands-on and just say anything he wants in a tweet and potentially be held to it. And if you don't know behind the scenes, G2 and other teams in CSGO did push back. It wasn't just talent like in LEC. The teams themselves were like, look, what the fuck's going on here? Like, now we're getting taught up and all this and we're suddenly complicit. But here's the problem. When everyone did that, they sent the message, Saudi Arabia money, not welcome in eSports. And then what happened was they came and said, how about we put a few Few more zeros on and then everyone went and everything's cool and so here's the question i have right there's two ways you can go here i've got two lines for you one goes like this we cannot have a discussion about caring about combating misogyny or championing women's rights human rights let's be real until yeah. we can answer this question what could saudi arabia do at which point they are no longer welcome what will make them not belong in the scene they are already embedded in it all this money what action can they take that can ever strike them off Spoil no one can answer the question there is no limit they can kill people they can do anything they can even go to war they can bomb people with the spawn other one of ESL sponsors they can bomb fucking people in Yemen and they can all die Yemen I noticed there's nobody gives a fuck about Yemeni women's rights or children's rights there or how about just people who are civilians aren't even combatants in an active fucking war zone then the other question goes like this does this imply it literally does think it through that Andrew Tate doesn't belong now because he is just a guy in a video but if he comes back with a billion dollars and buys Blast, is he suddenly 
No, there's going to be an Andrew That's Tate championship question. in Luton in the UK. <laughs> What's going on? These are things almost inferred by the stands we're taking. Because you notice we're taking a stance like early up in the battle and then we're just giving all the ground up when they come in with the, tukes, the, the nukes and the tanks, as it were. So were we actually the resistance or were we just getting a better deal for ourselves, guys? Yeah, this is, you know, something that, Richard mentioned sports washing earlier. Like this is an issue that has plagued the sports industry from the very beginning. Like I think when, you know, when tournament organizers decide where to host some an event that, you know, you see dollar signs, but I think in reality, you know, as everyone on this call knows, you know, the ramifications of that are so enormous um you know these are very highly you know even looking at like what katavice does for for that community in poland and what a huge impact it makes even when you zoom in on that specifically it's like yeah these are you know big these are actions with big social and political consequences both in the positive generating tourism bringing more people to the country exposing more people to the culture and you know, the flip side of that obviously being, you know, in the case of, of, you know, LGBTQ casters being expected to, to do events in places like Saudi Arabia, it's like, Great you know, point. at that point, it's like how, you know, you're dealing with the complete, complete opposite effect. Mm. And just to put, uh, cause I, you know me, I love to put people specifically on blast because I don't give a fuck about this industry anymore and all must burn for their sins. Uh, let's talk about team liquid, right? Like, I mean, team liquid are a fantastic example of this fucking unbelievable, uh, you know, m moral equivocating when it comes to, you know, what they say publicly, their standards and values and principles are, and what they actually do. And to give you an example, I can't remember what fucked up law it was that got passed. There was something jumping off in Texas. You know how Texas is. You know how it be. And uh, anyway, uh, the uh, CEO of Team Liquid, one of the CEOs, uh, Steve, he had to tweet out and say, listen, we're appalled at this. Um, we're going to do everything we can to stand with the LGBTQ community. We're going to be down there for the league finals, and we're going to be doing our best to support that community and you go that's fucking great yeah they do need support yeah you know sound i'm totally on board with you for that then team liquid by extension are now business partners with the saudi arabian regime via the mechanism of owning an esl pro league slot they are co-owners with esl and esl are owned by savvy gaming who are entirely owned no matter how much they say they're a shareholder company their sole shareholder is the fucking saudi arabian public investment fund when you take that money you agree that the chairman of your board is crown prince mohammed bin salman there is, there's no layers. It's him. They say he's hands on. <laughs> Literally, they brag that he is hands on with the yes, project. And, and he does come to the meetings, and he certainly does have input. So then, what did Team Liquid do? Did they say, well, we can't do this. We've just made a pledge to the L uh, LGBTQ community. No, they didn't. They said, actually, thinking about it, we have we have confidence that ESL are going to figure it out, and they'll never put anyone at harm in harm's way, and we would never force anyone to go and attend an event over there. You know, so we think it's actually going to be all right. You always give yourselves permission to take the fucking money, so don't tell me about the other things. It's really easy in America and Britain and most of Europe to fucking talk about these things and take the stand on the right side. That's easy. That's easy. That's taking kids fucking lunch money when you're fucking 42, right? I'm talking about you want to actually do a fight that might do some good? Say no to the money. Make a public stand. Drive that fucker at Neon crazy. You all saw that Wall Street Journal report, right? He literally threatened to pull a gun out from under his desk and shoot people in the boardroom because he couldn't understand why they weren't taking the partnership. What? So That's what Riot wanted to outraged? work with, dude. They wanted to work with yeah. that guy who's, with a, who's pulling guns. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm sure Mark Merrill's fantasized about that one. So here's the. So this is what I mean. Go and fight the fights where they need to be fought. Don't tell me about these values here where we we everyone stands for the same fucking thing. Activision Blizzard did the same shit. It's like here's LGBTQ representation on a broadcast. Here's rainbow flags. Here's some tweets supporting the LGBT. Great, all wonderful stuff. Doesn't bother me. I'm in the rainbow club. I don't give a fuck. This is great. More of that, please. But then what happens on the fucking what happens on the Asian broadcasts no you won't do it on the South Korean broadcast you definitely won't do it on the Chinese broadcast you definitely won't do it on the Middle East broadcast you are moral cowards the industry needs actual leaders people with a backbone and you know what to have that backbone here's how it works you still get to make money. You still get to be fabulously wealthy. You just don't get to be unbelievably Saudi Arabian wealthy. That's it. That's all you have to do. And let me tell you, those additional zeros that you accept, that's the value you put on the lives of people you say you care about, you fucking liars, grifters, and cowards. This industry is a sham. By the way, a quick clarification from a past episode about this topic. At the time, that was the day that that story dropped. That ESL, no one knew this behind the scenes, was being bought by the Savvy Gaming Group from the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia. And so at the time, in the intro to that episode, we talked about the fact that it had been planned through people involved in Faceit to invest in the company me and Monty and Richard were setting up, right? I can confirm we turned that money down completely. None of that money has come through that company. None of that money will ever touch my hands except by the fact that eventually all money circulates through the entire world. But I don't ever equivocate in that regard. I don't think the idea that like, well, eventually all money's dirty, that's different from a, a mafia guy literally turning me and going, keep your mouth shut and there's your cut. That's very different from being someone who's later happens to get somebody through a job. Because here's the key thing to understand, and if you don't understand this principle, you won't get why the Saudi Arabian one is so egregious, is, you know, everyone does that stupid thing where they go, the silly Saudis, if they'd have just bought one company, said the Mohammed bin Salman guy, Guy isn't involved and then they bought a separate company which was a holding group for esports then they could claim no but the holding yeah. group are good guys from esports and they're actually trying to battle Saudi Arabia values and they're going to sort of be like a sleeper agent to get us in there and we're going to change their culture no 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 the reason they actively want to tell you that so essentially you're asking just for a reach around while they fuck you that's what you want in the other scenario in this case the reason they are actively saying no 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 you know the main guy that's responsible for all the evil shit he is hands on involved with this because that is the esports washing you are taking something incredibly dirty and horrible that no one would associate with in esports and saying what if we put your favorite thing in his hands though and he's holding it up doesn't that make the thing that you like sort of good and transfer onto him the values that you like about that, that that's an active that is a feature not a bug they are intentionally doing that so don't think why didn't they do this that is the exercise the exercise is what trinkets can i offer you to where you will say nothing about evil and even worse this is worse it's one thing if you just call it out to I will actively carry water for them. I will go around saying things like, but they allow women to drive since 2018. And then, which implies, by the way, they don't stone them. They don't put them in prison for things. They don't have to like have a chaperone. Otherwise, they can't go certain places and attend certain things. They can't get involved in any kind of a protest. Movement. You're even implying and like, it's not as bad as you think, guys. Like they're not doing the worst total things. Like that whole thing there is a really serious point to make because they are actively involved in that. They're not someone who just tangentially through like a million layers of six degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon also be a fucking straight interesting reference there to all this fucking person they're not in any way trying to hide it they're trying to put it in your face and go do you accept this and everyone's just going yes because a billion dollars in it I there's an interesting point to be made here about I mean again you know I don't have intimate knowledge of what team structures and financial relationships and capitalization looks like and what the actual like structure of those deals is. But I wonder of the folks who have been in a position to take money from, you know, the Saudi PIF fund or, or anything like that, um, what choices they had given the fact that they took on outside capital and years before and sold, you know, in some cases, you know, the majority of their company to outside firms or other entities, you know, they're, they're now X amount of years later in a position where, you know, due to fiduciary responsibility, they, they can no longer say no to that money. 
um, you know, they're in a position where they are, you know, how compromised they are is just, you know, that's yeah. a, a fixture, um, you know, and again, I don't know how many team owners would have made different decisions had they known something like that, but that was oh. sort of, depending on the source of their original capitalization, that was, could kind of be the Faustian bargain that they made, you know, years ago. And now that chicken is coming home to roost in a, in a really big way. I think you could make a wider point about the problems with a society in which you would literally be essentially like like legally in trouble for not accepting blood money from yeah. genocidal regimes. Right. Yeah, it's probably a bigger point there to make too. So, I realized, I realized yeah. about a year ago, just before just quickly before you jump in, Monty, fiduciary duty, like you get these little loaded phrases which you understand are actually like the shields for the evil. Right, you know, and and fiduciary duty is one of the ones rapidly because it essentially says profit is king, and we can accept any money. In fact, we have to. We're obligated to. We have to take it. We must take it. And so this is how you let the foxes into the hen coop. Yeah, and a, and a couple of things, guys. Uh, just be, for sake of disclosure, I do do some consulting on the side with ESL, um, and so yeah, money's evil. <laughs> <laughs> That's the choice that I know. Uh, he literally works yeah. with the evil Saudi League. Fucking yeah, you know, you, know, you know that fucking picture of him is the devil? That's him with the makeup off. <laughs> That's actually a joke I made. Before. That was the hazing uh, ritual <laughs> when he actually got the, the money. <laughs> um, so I, I, you know, I am actively uh, working with them on the side as a result of stuff. Um, oh, we lost the camera. We'll get it back in a second, I'm sure. Um, but just so you guys, like, I don't want to make that you know, or keep that information private or anything like that. Um, yeah, but the wider statement. point, no, the key point to make here though, Monty, is it's about consistency though, right? You are not going out there going like, what are you doing working with this person, right? Uh, yes, exactly. That, that That's my point is that I just don't discuss these issues and like, I'm, I'm happy to listen to your conversations about it, but that's not the battle I want to fight. Uh, there are other ones that are more, I think I can have a bigger effect on like I, I don't really think I can have a big effect on like global geopolitics as much as I might want to so I, I tend to stay out of that um but yeah I mean I I think in when it comes to when it comes to these issues like it's also I think Lauren's point was extremely good uh where for instance ESL was owned by Modern Times Group which was a publicly traded Swedish company and they sold it. Like, I don't know really what it level was of control. It was also going to sell to China before, so it was going to get sold one way or another. Well, but I'm just saying, like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what level of control even the executives at ESL had oh, before not. that decision I'll being made. Um, and it's like, it's, I think it's really hard to be in that situation. Also, it's just true that most of the employees of these companies didn't know that this was happening. And it's just one day there, you know, so they were kind of just thrown into the middle of all of this stuff. And I think that's, that's a very important point. And we'll see what these people do in the future. Obviously, there is a people shouldn't be expected to just instantly quit when they have, you know, to feed their families and they have to, um, you know, they have to live their lives in a, in a responsible as as they way. they haven't spoken that, out about it. Because here's what, the problem. Well, if you've spoken out about it, then you go, I've got to feed my family so that family has to die. That's pretty fucked up, homie. I can't really... Ma like, you know when people say that line earlier? So you're going to pick the Andrew Tate hill to die on. You're just going to let a load of your many people die on a real hill so that you can keep working in a fucking children's video game. There's the other thing I can't... And you you nailed it, Richard. In it, oh, no, Monty, it's not that you can't get rich. You just can't get fabulously uber wealthy and rich. You can't yeah. take the shortcut to the top. What was yeah. this industry? Didn't we all get here like 10 plus years of grinding and all the shit jobs? Because it was mega, because the games were good, because it was an awesome competition venue. At the end, the point wasn't to go, but we all have to agree at the end, we do whatever it takes just to get the extra money of the yacht, right? That ain't it. Because there's a problem. You know when they go, got to feed my family. They always make them sound like fucking Aladdin stealing a loaf of bread. No, in this case, a guy has a fucking AK up against a woman's head. And then you're, and then he goes, take this massive sack of money instead of this smaller, medium-sized sack of money and I kill her. What the fuck is that bargain? That ain't feeding your family, my dude. You're just letting other people's families die. And, and Monty, to your point, here's a counterpoint, right? F fuck them. Uh, let me let me tell you how ESL get in a position where they have to take the Saudi money or the Chinese money. How all these motherfuckers got to this point, right? Because for years, 
they their business practices were garbage for years they kept borrowing money spending money they didn't have fucking continually making it bigger brighter shinier will bleed at a slower rate than our fucking opponents in the market space and we'll figure it all out tomorrow the esports industry has been smoking mirrors for so fucking long with no real revenue streams that in the end here's what it came down to the only people who could afford to fucking bail them out were all the evil fucking regimes Regimes, right and they all queued up and the esl went well fucking pick your poison because let me tell you i know from you know back in 2016 2017 they were talking to like malaysian tech companies and stuff like that they could have got bought by someone who wasn't like this but no they had to keep going had to keep spending had to be number one in the industry even though financial fucking quarterly reports were telling you they were bleeding fucking cash they were laying people off they were downsizing they were doing everything they had to do to stay alive until the evil sugar daddy got in the room so fuck them because the only reason they were ever in a position where they sold saudi arabia was through their own fucking negligence their own desire to win at all fucking costs and it's an industry-wide problem people are spending money they ain't got they're robbing peter to fucking pay paul and in the end they know they'll get bailed out by one of these fucking tyrannical regimes and and they think this is fine and then they go guys what else are we supposed to do run a responsible business how about that Run a responsible business. This industry's been... We, we needed another fucking recession or something to happen to stop this. We needed another bubble to burst. It's been fake for fucking years. And now the China and China and Saudi Arabia, go look it up. They're not just owning the companies that run the tournaments. They're not just partnering up with the esports orgs. Qatar is not just literally paying esports orgs to go and relocate there. It gets darker. They're buying the intellectual property. They're investing in Blizzard. They're investing in Riot. They're investing in EA. They are going to own everything from the what top. They say they're going to make thirty then, new games or something in esports. Yeah, it was like some report like that, me, right? Then tell me about how you get to impose your values because I've been hearing a lot about this down the years hey we'll do business with these people and they will see the wonders of western capitalism and they'll embrace what we believe never fucking happens does it we always fucking end up saying okay china you can airbrush this particular person out of a star wars poster you, you see what i mean we all end up like yes. disney we don't yeah. end up like the last free fucking nation oh. who could do business with these people so, By the way, quick aside, two aside, quick things. Hold up, hold up. Well, as an aside, the, the Saudi fund also owns part of Disney, by the way. Okay. Two quick things. <laughs> One, here's already where you can't be the guy who I speak for LGBT rights and up for... I will die on this hill for the people in the West if you work for Riot. Here's why. You know the person who Riot just announced as like sort of the spokesperson slash figure for Worlds? He's a famous rapper in America. Let me know when you ever see posters of him with Chinese text on it about the fact that he's the spokesperson for Worlds. Let me know, homie, and send me that fucking image. You won't ever see it. The joke is, you are even when you praise that. But if you know who actually owns Riot, Riot at the top. That's fucking disgusting that you're implying that, like, this is a, a step forwards. Oh, by the way, he will not be ever featured in the other countries, like, and he'd probably never be on the <laughs> Korean or Asian broadcast. Like, that's fucking mental. You're actually, a, you're actively standing against what you care about. And then the other thing is, oh, what was it on the particular angle about? I, oh, I, that's I, it. Here's the message everyone sent to another company in eSports called Blast. What you said to Blast was this. How fucking dare you try and make a living and feed your family? You didn't get enough money from the blood money. But you know what? You can't actually take this money from Saudi Arabia to let you get on even ground with the SL, who's leveraged to fuck, whose main parent company hemorrhages tens of millions and wants to sell them to anyone who can pay for it. But you know what? Your main rival, the guy we just told you, you're not going to get to battle with. He can take the entire war chest from the same people. And now he can crush you like a fucking bug and you can't do anything about it. Your mistake was you didn't ask for an off zeros. That's what we've told, Blast. That is what our actions and how we have policed the industry have set as a standard. It's like, you know what? If you're going to sell out, sell your entire soul. I mean, one of the first things I said when the Blast base it deal went public was basically like the, you know, the the road to hell is paved with you know artificially inflated valuations unsustainable monetization <laughs> and everything else it's like you know exactly to what richard just said it's like you know companies are so so over leveraged and you know just in such a dreadful place when you actually really dig into the numbers that you know at a certain point your your only option if you ever want to exit is you know not somebody that you really want to be doing business with. It's the fucked up merry-go-round again, just writ large. You know what yeah. I mean? You 
ever noticed how in esports, like, are you, how many years we've been taking whatever fucking shady shit is throwing money into the scene? Here's some loot boxes. Oh, well, that's fine. That's not child gambling. Oh, here's actual child gambling. Well, that's all right, because, you know, <laughs> the, 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 it's, it's crypto. Those kids have got to eat too, Rich. Those kids have got to eat too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it's like, here's one expert. And you're like, well, all right, all right. You know, and it, on and on. And here's NFTs. Everyone, everything good. And it just keeps going. It's like, guys, we needed to lose in order for us to win. And p nobody wants to be the ones that, like, have that happen to them. Everyone wants to be the last man standing, so they take the money. I mean, again, we started talking about G2. You remember that? Carlos again. Dude, dude, the escalation of this has been absolutely insane, right? Like, I was going to say, we, we, we do have to, like, start wrapping this up with our final thoughts. But think about where this <laughs> guys. This is how fucked up everything is right now. If you think that esports is somehow a better place than it used to be, and I said this on Twitter. Now, we started esports with it being the exploitation of young people, uh, questionable business practices, money laundering, etc. Yeah. And like, look yeah. where we are now. This, this whole conversation was sparked by Carlos drinking with a guy that a lot of people don't like and we've now reached geopolitics level of massively powerful countries the only thing like the next step is literally just attacking god for making the world so we can't really go much bigger than this is like right that now one, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't fancy it out myself uh, no but i mean look uh, you, you know what i mean it's like at the end of the day like all of the like uh, how much sympathy can you fucking have like, our, our industry's poisoned. It's terminal. Like, it's going to be something else. You don't think it can get worse? You think it stops with blood money? You think it stops with a blood... blood? I and mean, by the way, there were people who had actual literal blood diamonds in. I left that out. Go look up my reporting about the Sapinda group, where a guy literally turned up at a fucking esports event I was live and said he was going to fucking dome me. That was great. You know, uh, uh, you, know uh, you think it can't get worse? It always gets worse. It always gets worse because we allow it to get worse because we just want to keep the fucking little fireworks display going on. Nobody wants it to be small. The fans don't pay a penny. You all want it for free. You won't even pay pay-per-view. We can't even do that. We can't even have a legitimate fucking revenue stream anywhere in this fucking industry. And everyone's trying to do things bigger, better, yep. dominate the and pie. No one cares about a fucking ecosystem. Look. Every time someone talks about an esports ecosystem, it makes me fucking laugh. You don't care about an ecosystem. You just want to fucking own it all. You want to run the biodome. Then you get to talk about an ecosystem. It's the yep. same shit every time. People think in monopolistic terms exclusively in this business because there's no regulatory bodies that can get away with it it's a fucking absolute fiesta every fucking day we needed a hard reset that's yep. what we needed a great reset i could get behind and and here's here's the truth for you fans out there and where this conversation goes is like you the fans are also partially responsible for this if you guys were willing to put your money up to pay for this content which you have cried oh no you know it has to be free every single time that's what caused this situation. Like, actually, seriously, if there was proper monetization in this scene, which is partially the fault of the tournament organizers, it's partially the fault of the publishers who wanted to make this free as a marketing exercise. But there is very little money from the fans, you know, flowing into esports. So here's the here's here's how it goes, guys. If you want this to change, pay for it, please. Like we're asking you support the people that are good in this space. If you are part of this industry, when this stuff comes up, fucking say something about it. We all hate it. So if everyone speaks up about it, maybe it can be lessened or stopped to a certain degree. Like the degree. first thing that happened at the beginning of the episode where everyone spoke up at the same yeah. time. And, all, and basically Monty is sort of in a, a sideways saying if you'd have just supported Flashpoint, maybe none of this <laughs> would have needed to happen, you know, in the end, in a roundabout way, you know. I, I was just trying to put a good tournament on. What do you want? I mean, no, like it's a, you know, I think not to get too esoteric with it, but the saying there is no such thing as ethical consumption under capitalism. This is this idea that, you know, everyone and every entity is compromised to a certain extent. And like the most, the, the best way to counteract that is through like mutual aid and community support. Yes. And, you know, looking at that concept through the lens of esports, like supporting the creators that you love directly, if that's Patreon or, you know, any sort of other like direct one-to-one -one support, paying for broadcasts, like these are things that, you know, 
really could help change the way that the industry works and, you know, make things more sustainable and more holistic and, you know, have people be less dependent on outside sources that are, you know, can be incredibly malicious forces ultimately. Yeah. And, and vote has- with the dollars. Vote yeah. for the companies that don't do this shit. Uh-huh. Like when there is a smaller company, pay them for the and show that you can support them. Yeah. And, and and guys, like the problem is, is that until there are viable alternatives of where to work, Riot has a complete monopoly over their circuit. There isn't, you know, if people want to make money from Riot, there's only a very few people, uh, including people on this call, uh, who can make a living independently of them. It's really not easy for most people. And as much as I don't like people who are, you know, won't speak up or about the issues that are very core to them, a lot of people are just fucking scared. And so the only way to get the louder voices out is to create an alternative way for them to make a living. And I think that is a really serious job that needs to happen within the esports community because we're too dependent on these governmental entities and the tournament operators and the publishers and even even the journalism sites are dependent on the publishers because if they don't have the advanced access uh, uh, to write articles about that you guys are going to click on through SEO, if they start slamming people, they just get cut off from the publishers. Then all of a sudden, all their competitors get all the inf- all the interviews, all the information, everything like that. So it's it's really tough right now. It's really tough to be in that space. And this is a call to the fans to really like put up some money. And support the the like Lauren is saying the content creators that are out there that do this kind of work because it's you know you wonder why we're so salty a lot of the time it's because it's it feels like screaming into the void and, and you know, fuck the fans yeah. fuck the fans uh, <laughs> can anyone take the fans seriously have you seen the shit like what, what when when did esports fans start loving politicians by the way when the fuck did this happen like we just had the CSGO major announced and there's fucking Macron announcing it right going oh, I'm going to make I'm going to make France an amazing like esports hub your fucking approval rating was through the fucking toilet while you were fucking instructing police to fire tear gas grenades into people's eyes because they fucking didn't like you and didn't like the direction you were taking France in with your COVID protocols, among other fucking things. Like, what, 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 we, we, we all love this guy. We're, we're, we're going to suck off politicians now. Yeah, we're going to suck off politicians now. Oh, uh, literally, all the comments. Hey, Macron's giving us credibility. Macron, in like two years, once he's had all his big events and encouraged a bunch of youth voters and made a little bit of money for all of his rich fucking friends who are, are on the venues and are going to get all these handouts and government money, he's going to fucking turn around and, like, I don't know, before an election, he'll do a moral crusade and talk about yeah. how violent video games actually to blame for uh, a degradation in society. Politicians ain't your fucking friends. No more than these fucking regimes are that are by and all your shit fuck the fans uh you know until you stop becoming a bunch of fucking bootlickers you get what you deserve fuck them all right. by the way the other I reason also <laughs> the other reason also in my opinion why we have to say these things now is because that richard made a great point in a video he did on his channel about conflict of interest go check it out on his channel the point he made at the end was such a salient one when me and richard leave it's like last of the mohicans we're the last people who even seem to understand what a conflict of interest is the new generation of journalists <laughs> is just a shit hype man nelk boy idiot who just wants the hoodie and a beer with stewie 2k and a pat on the back from esl and their uh, that arm that's up their ass, telling them what a great job they did and how they did an excellent job, like hitting the hard hitting questions, and then they all go home and the esports is just a big circle jerk once again. And there would be no one to hold these people's feet to the fire. And if they are, guess what? They won't be in the press rooms. They won't be the ones asking the question at the press conference, which you now have to submit your question to Riot, and they go, "Is your name Travis Gafford?" No, and you don't get to ask a question of their particular player. You that that is the future, and the future, by the way, is coming year on year now it's going to be next year and the year after that and the year after because me and Richard aren't going to be here mate like if I'm here I'll just be the guy going and this is why Jensen might have been better than Beauty I won't be telling you about this shit I said it ages ago Richard I mean it I won't fucking die for esports it's not even Quake the good shit that was years ago (laughs) I'm not dying for League of Legends Bad Man's Daughter I didn't even think Daughter was good I was like let's play Counter Strike some more you idiots so I'm definitely not dying for this shit some of you guys can you can volunteer for that death march I mean honestly like what I will say is you know, 
it's incredibly important to support those people who hold power to account in any space, including this one. Um, you know, people who have spent their lives and careers, many of whom are on this call, you know, really trying to to find those things and call them out and raise awareness, um, you know, subscribe to those publications and get, you know, amplify their work and get involved. And, you know, because I think when you let only a fixed number of companies control everything, um, you know, to Monty's point, it becomes harder and harder to do anything within the industry that doesn't somehow tether yourself to one of them. Um, and if you are one of those people who is operating under the constraints of a game publisher, um, you know, unionize like your your union rep here um, with the LCSPA board. Like I'm telling you, look at, you know, the amount of change that the Activision Blizzard employees who unionized what they've been able to accomplish within their own companies. Um, you know, I think there is incredible power in numbers and you know that's definitely one parting thought i would like to leave and then my last one really is like you know something richard mentioned with macron i think changing the way the ways that we seek validation as an industry and changing the places that we look for that um you know i think esports doesn't need validation from politicians or from traditional sports or yeah. traditional entertainment or anything else, you know, I think we can be our, our own and seek validation from the people who you admire within the industry and, you know, look to validate each other as opposed to, you know, looking elsewhere. Yeah. Agreed. Well, uh, well said, uh, and we hope you guys do continue to support and truly like change your beliefs on some of this. If you're in the industry, consider speaking out more and being consistent because that's the most infuriating thing about this entire incident in my mind. Um, yes, Mark and- Zimmerman. <laughs> yes, Mark <laughs> Zimmerman. Obviously, the though. The fucking yeah. tick I've ever seen when he said, if I haven't personally and publicly seen you object to every injustice in the world, or you are in the periphery to any injustice, you are banned from objecting to literally anything, said no one ever, you fucking dumbass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and like, you if know. We can agree on one thing don't dictate to people when you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're the best, Zimmerman. <laughs> I, I did. I, and like, you know what? If you haven't spoken up in the past, just start now. Now is a great time to start, guys. Now is an excellent time to start. And if you're a fan, consider supporting the entities that you really appreciate within the scene directly, because that will lead to less of this stuff happening in the future. That absolutely will. Monetization is a core part. Yes, Lauren? (laughs) I just wanted to say something really, really quickly. And that is like, you know, you... Of course I interrupted and now I completely fucking lost it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Monetization in the industry if you're supporting people. Um, very no, you said something before. I was speaking up maybe, like you can speak up now or something. Yeah. Um, you know, on the point of speaking up, I think like it's really important to know that speaking up doesn't mean you need to log on to social media and make a public, like a fully fledged public statement. And that is the only yes. definition of speaking up or you know, taking action that the world will accept. It's like, that's, that's so not it. Like if, if speaking up to you is like, you work at Riot or Blizzard and you're going to take a step internally to try to address something, or you're going to, you know, donate to a charity, or you're going to start conversations within your own networks, or you're going to you know, whatever. There are a million. Well, you can afford to journalists if you can privately. They'll protect your identity <laughs> as long as they're legit ones. Yeah, yeah. Send, send the send the details to uh, our friend Richard Lewis here and provide guerrilla information. Be a double agent. Do it. <laughs> yeah. And don't feel like you know when we say when Monty says speak up. You know that only means you know in the in the way that it's like post a tweet right now it's like no like you know do something that you feel like is is valuable and enriching whatever that means to you yep yep yeah and also 
you need we need double agents. Everybody needs those double agents. Otherwise, a lot of that information can't be there. So, in fact, the more noble thing can often be being on the inside and really shifting the industry by submitting that information to qualified journalists. That's excellent, guys. That's excellent. You know, you may not get your props for a long time, if ever, but the people in the industry will know you're a real one uh, and defend you. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, as usual, esports, Delenda Est. We'll see you with some when the next round of bullshit happens. Thanks for coming on, Lauren. Tomorrow.